Hey, what's going on guys, Extra Fusion here, and today I'm going to be giving you guys a review for Alpha Omega DLC 3's Black Ops 4 Zombies map. I know, I know, it's been a while, I, this map's been out for like a week now, but I haven't gotten around to it because of, you know, conflicts with real life getting in the way and stuff like that. So, either way, I'm here now. I did record a first attempt reaction video to it, but you know what, my PC is trash, the video did not work. So I just, I cut it, I said, I'm not doing, I'm not, I'm not dealing with this right now. So I just cut the whole thing. It was crap quality. Everything was just shit about it. It was laggy here and there. I just, I said, no, I'm going to wait till I get my new laptop so I can actually post, you know, live commentary videos and actually stream. But for now, I just, I can't do that with this PC. So I just, screw it. We're not having a live reaction to this map. But my reactions are pretty interesting too. I really enjoyed a lot to this map. Of course, there's things I don't enjoy. That's what we're going to get into, the pros and the cons about Alpha Omega. So starting off with the pros, the map's beautiful. I mean, right when you turn on the power, like even before it looks good, but once you turn on the power, the map gets so bright and vibrant and the colors just pop at you. It looks really good. People always say that the graphics suck in this game and I always question that. I'm like, the graphics are great. I mean, compared to Black Ops 3, you know, they're, they're not that much improved. They're kind of the same thing, but they're still really damn good. I think the HUD definitely gets in the way a bit. So people kind of, you know, they don't think about how the maps look themselves. They kind of think about the HUD. And obviously Blackout and multiplayer have their own problems with graphics in my personal opinion. I think they had to be downgraded for Blackout a little bit, which kind of downgraded the multiplayer quality. But Zombies, they still maintained really good graphics for their maps. I mean, all of them look really good in my opinion. There's not one map in this game that I think looks like shit. Just looking off into the desert, when you start up this map, it's beautiful. It looks really good. It gives me some Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull vibes, some 1950s vibes, Attack the Reactive Thing type you know, feelings going on. You have the 50s music that's plays throughout the map. You have the um, round changing music having that like 50s tone to it. The game over music being a 50s theme. I love all of that. It really adds to the feel of the map and it has a distinct sort of a, um, uh, atmosphere because of that and I love it I love the atmosphere of this map even though it's just nuketown and at the end of the day it's literally just nuketown and a bunker bunker under it but it still has such a distinct feeling this is what nuketown should have been when it came out in black ops 2 nuketown zombies in my opinion is not really that great of a map it's pretty low in my you know ranking of all the zombie maps it's a fun survival map to hop on every now and then but it does not have the replay value and the atmosphere that this map has so far and I've only played like four or five games of it I haven't even completed the Easter egg yet but I have you know seen the Easter egg I have seen people play it so I do know what it's all like I know that the boss fight is goddamn awesome that's a, definitely a pro the boss fight just from watching it is one of the coolest ones I'm definitely going to be streaming me completing the Easter egg soon uh, whenever I get my you know new laptop but the boss fight is awesome. You're playing, you're fighting against the Avogadro from Transit. The story behind this map, a lot of the story, I think is some good stuff. I like how you can play as the Ultimus as well as the Primus crew. That's an awesome thing. Uh, a lot of the quotes are really funny and really entertaining to listen to. A lot of storyline videos have been created off of this map alone. I mean, you look at compared to other maps, there's been like tons of awesome new storyline tidbits that we've gotten because of this map. And it's sad because they're going to be ending the ether this year with the next map. And I'm like, well, there's so much more I feel like they could do. And I really I keep saying this because of the lack of development post launch that this game is having because of obviously Activision forcing Treyarch to work on the next game. I, they're not going to give us a good finish. We all know we, the rest of the content for zombies includes DLC 4, which sounds like it's going to be within the Call of Dead's location it's going to be in that siberian outpost that call the dead is at i don't know why it's going to be there i don't know the story behind it all we know is that it will in fact be there now what is it going to entail about the easter egg what's the ending gonna be we don't know but we do also know based on leaks that we are going to be getting a dlc 5 which is going to include three remakes which includes transit buried and die rise now these are not going to be remasters they're going to be different maps kind of similar to what we're getting for you know alpha omega dlc 4 and Blood of the Dead and Classified. They're gonna be different maps, just the same location, but they're just gonna be, you know, the same location. That's the only, you know, similarity. And obviously there'll be some returning wonder weapons, returning features, but it'll be a completely different story going on. And that's, I think, the most important thing is the story, the Easter egg itself is gonna be different. 
um, surrounding pawn, of course, Black Ops 4's mechanics, which definitely adds on to a con about this map. It's kind of high for every Black Ops 4 map. I'm not a big fan of the mechanics in this game. Now, I'm not saying all the mechanics are shit. Not at all. Not, not even in the slightest. There's a lot of mechanics Black Ops 4 has that I really, really enjoy. But there's also a lot that I don't. I don't like the perk system. I don't like the point system. I don't like the HUD. I don't like the D-pad and how it's all, you know, elixirs rather than having more equipment and stuff like that. I don't like the specialist weapons, how you automatically have them, and that they're basically just get out of jail free cards. Uh, I'm just, I'm not a big fan of how that all works. I'm not a big fan of the creative class system that they have. I'm not a big fan of some little, you know, quality of life features like the object when you pick up an object like a part it doesn't show up on your screen like it did in black ops 3 stuff like that i don't enjoy but there's also stuff i love like how the power-ups don't automatically pop up right away and they give you some time to you know go in there i love how smooth the game feels the hit markers are kind of hit and miss for me i don't really mind them but at the same time i wouldn't mind if they weren't there that's not really something i care about that much i love the attachments and how they work i love the master crafts that you can put on I really, the operator mods, don't forget about those. There's some really great stuff that Black Ops 4 has, but also a lot of bad stuff. So mechanic -wise, mechanical wise, this map still has some issues just like all the other Black Ops 4 maps. But as a map itself, like if this map was just ported into Black Ops 3, it would be a lot better because of what Black Ops 3 is, in my opinion. It having, you know, the, that perk system where the perks are around the map rather than four specific ones that you have to use because the game tells you to, and they're just generic looking machines, you know what I mean? I'm not really a big fan of how that system works. But at the same time, I'm all right. The ray guns, the ray gun Mark II, all five of them, which yes, there's five of them on this map. You can get the original ray gun Mark II from the box, and then you can get the other four from doing Easter egg quests, obviously. They're not really, they're not part of the main Easter egg quest. I love that, how you don't have to get them for the Easter egg quest. They're just a side thing you can do, that's awesome. They're all four really fun to use, they're all four really useful, they're all really good, and, well, I guess five if you count the original, which the original, it's still good, if you pack a punch it, you can pack a bunch of all of them, which is awesome. They're just an enjoyable, some of the most enjoyable wonder weapons I think we've ever had, honestly. I really, really, really like them. I mean, if we look at other Black Ops 4 wonder weapons, this, these are probably some of the best. I like the gauntlets, and I kind of like the All-Star Folly, but I hated the upgrade process for it. So yeah, I gotta say, the Mark, II, the Mark II's might be the best Wonder Weapons and the most enjoyable in this entire game. I'm gonna be honest. Um, I'm not really a big fan of the Magna Gat and the Acid Gat. The Kraken's pretty cool, but it's not the greatest in the world. Uh, the Nine Wonder Weapon, it's okay. Uh, Winter's Howl is, you know, a CSC. Uh, so yeah, these are probably some of the best in the game, and I really, really enjoy the elemental Wonder Weapon system that this map and, of course, Ancient Evil did. I don't know, I, I like when maps do that. At the same time, I don't want every map to do that, but I do like when they maps do it. Of course, you have to make it unique. Don't just do, you know, wind, fire, ice, and, um, you know, wind. You gotta do different things, and that's what they did here. They made them all unique and different. You have the one that acts like the paralyzer, the one that's basically like a shotgun, the one that's basically like a regular, you know, one, but it's full auto, and you can dual wield it when you pack a punch it, and the other one, which is like a rocket launcher almost all really unique and all work in their own ways and it makes for a really fun map now the map itself has a one big issue that i'm running into and it is the it's similar to origins it's one of the only problems i have with origins it's the fact that the gas continues to come up during the map which makes you you have to go back and turn on the switch like mid round sometimes to get the pack a punch back on it doesn't just stay on and maybe there's a way around this i don't know maybe there's a way to make it so it never goes away but you have to continuously go back up you know re turn the valves to get the pack bunch open if you want to open i hate that because it's not easy to turn those valves there's a million zombies running on you and this map is hard the zombies are vicious as hell they run at you fast and they're all really strong if they have the acid stuff on them they're strong as hell and they destroy you and it gets really frustrating when you're trying to turn those valves and you're just getting just destroyed by zombies left and right and you're just like, bro, let me turn this valve, I just want to pack a punch, you have to wait between rounds. But guess what, when you're turning the valves, zombies spawn anyways, even if it's in between rounds. It's so frustrating, I think they need to fix something about that, I'm not really a big fan of it, but that's really the only, like, in-map problem I have with this entire map. Like, honestly, the other problems I have were the Black Ops 4 mechanics, which are overall problems. 
But in terms of the map and how it plays, that's one of the only complaints I have. I think everything else is good. I think it's a top tier map, honestly. Um, I don't know about top top tier, but like definitely top 15 of all time zombie maps for sure. I don't know about top 10 yet. You'll have to see if it stands the test of time. I've only played a couple games of it for God's sake, but is it better than 9? I don't know. I really like 9 a lot. Is it better than Ancient Evil? Maybe. I think it's definitely close to being better than Ancient Evil, but then every other zombie map in this game I think is definitely worse than this one. Um, Dead of the Night is okay, you know, Nine or Voyage is okay, Blood of the Dead's okay, Classified's okay, they're all okay, but I think this one is definitely better than all those. I just don't know if it's better than Ancient Evil or Nine, you know? Because Ancient Evil and Nine are some really good maps, I really enjoy them a lot. Um, yeah, so I have to do the Easter egg, of course, I've already seen people do it, and it seems like a decently easy quest which I think the game needs. I mean, it needs at least one or two quests that are easy. I'm fine with quests being hard, but I just don't want every quest in the entire game to be hard. So I think this is one of those easier sort of maps um, for the for the, for the the main Easter egg quest. But in terms of the map itself, it's actually kind of difficult. Like, at least from what I'm playing, I, it's really tight, you know, close quarters, not many good training spots. So expect it to not be that easy of a map but the Easter egg quest itself is easy. So that's like the opposite of Buried. I feel like Buried is one of the easiest maps, but then the quest is really hard, one of the hardest. But this map so far, the quest seems to be one of the easiest, and the map itself seems to be pretty damn hard. I mean, I'm having trouble getting past like round 30 just because of how crazy these zombies are. I mean, that's if I'm trying to do stuff though. If I'm just, you know, running around the map shooting zombies, not really going for anything, then it's, it's different, it's, it's a lot easier. Um, but when you're trying to do stuff like turn those damn valves, it is just so damn frustrating with the zombies swiping you while you're trying to do the valves. It's just like, bro, calm down. I like the quests to getting the ray guns. I think they're easy enough, but they're hard enough, so they're not, you know, too easy for anyone to do. You have to actually do something for them. And they're easy to remember. I'm not going to have to, you know, keep looking up guides to do it or write stuff down on a piece of paper. No, I can just literally do them whenever I want because they're not that hard to do. I like how you can get a free perk by shooting off all the mannequin heads, which unfortunately I don't think you can do more than once, so I think it's just one free perk, which I wish this map had a challenge system like Ancient Evil and 9. Love the challenge systems where you can complete challenges and get free perks, free wound weapons, free pack of punch weapons, all that good stuff. I love that system. Um, fortunately, this map doesn't have that, but it still has really cool stuff like Rushmore. You can put all these different codes in, and when you put all these different codes in, it gives you free shit. Like, you can put certain codes in, and it'll give you a free, wonder, uh, free um, what's it called, power-up, or it'll give you free five minutes of, you know, increased health. There's a couple different um, combinations you can do, or you can get Ted to spawn in, or wake up, I guess, downstairs, and if you knife him, it'll let you cute the whole There's, like, little Easter eggs that are just really awesome on this map that make it unique and make it different than any other map. I really, really appreciate that. So, Alpha Omega, I'd give it like an 8.3 out of 10, 8.5 out of 10 maybe. It's a really good map. I'm enjoying it so far. Um, but of course, Black Ops 4's mechanics themselves are holding it down. And uh, now comes the biggest problem I have, one of the bigger problems. I don't like the end cutscene being, you know, not fully rendered. And then, of course, there's the situation that, well, this map is a remake. Now, I don't consider it to be as big of a deal as most people because it's not like it's a remaster. It's not like we're just seeing Nuketown again. People are, oh, like, oh, it's just another remaster. No, it's not like Nuketown at all. It's a completely new map, right? It's just at the same location. It's new story, new everything. The whole map's new. Let's be real here. It's just got Nuketown in it, and that's basically all there is to it. But we... For a season pass map, this is not what we should have gotten. Now, I know Treyarch has these behind the scenes problems, but this is what I was expecting. And I think this is not what they were planning. They were planning a lot of other stuff, but this is what should have happened in my opinion. We should have gotten two more chaos maps. That should have been DLC three, DLC four, right? But then Nuketown should have released for free or not maybe for free, just maybe as an additional map in the Black Ops Pass that you'll get if you have the Black Ops Pass. It should have released during, like in between maybe DLC 1 and DLC 2. And then in between DLC 3 and DLC 4, or in between DLC 2 and DLC 3, it should have given us this new Call of the Dead, which is gonna be DLC 4. Then in between DLC 3 and DLC 4, give us Transit. And then in between DLC 4, or afterwards, just give us Die Rise and Buried. That's how they should have done it. They should have done it more like that, where they're releasing these maps 
you know, interchangeably rather than making its way to the DLC 3 and as being a part of the Black Ops Pass maps, the four that we get, with it just being, you know, not not a remake. I don't even know if it's I want to call it a remake because it's more than a remake. It's a lot more than just a simple remake. You know what I mean? It's not like it's just Nuketown, but bigger. It, it's, it's, it's a lot more than that. And that's one of the reasons I like this map. And it's not just Nuketown. You know, just like Classified wasn't just five. And Mob the, Blood of the Dead is definitely not just Mob of the Dead. There's a lot more to it. It's a different Easter egg. It's a different story. Different everything. It's just the same location. And then they got some returning stuff like the Wonder Weapon. You know what I mean? Same way that Call of the Dead is going to be for DLC 4. It's not going to be Call of the Dead remastered. It's going to be a brand new map just within the same location. But why do you think they're doing this? They're doing this because they need to save time. They wanted to save time in development so they can work on Chaos Maps. They can work on other content. They can give us more rem remakes rather than just a few. But unfortunately, Activision just smacked Trek in the face and said, Screw you. You guys have to start working on their next game early. Because... Fuck it, we can't have you know, a year off from COD, so we need you guys to work on this next game. Boom, their development's cut short, they have to cancel their second season of content, and they have to start making shitty cutscenes that aren't, you know, well quality. And instead of giving us a really awesome ending to the Ether story, it's going to be subpar. Which is unfortunate. The maps themselves are good. It's just the overall arching game itself, it's like, come on, we could have gotten so much more. That's why I'm really hoping, and I don't think it's going to happen, but I'm really hoping they, they postpone the, the Ether ending for Black Ops 5, or whatever the next Black Ops game is called, right? Give us that game for a full-on ending. Maybe just on disc is Ether, and just give us like two or three maps on disc, and have that be the finale to Ether, right? So we get that at launch. The big finale, and it's on the new engine. The new engine that Modern Warfare is using in the next game for zombies. You you listen to the feedback that people had about the Black Ops 4 mechanics, and you work on that. You make it better for the next game. You make it more, you know, close re re resembled to Black Ops 3, but also a lot of the cool features from Black Ops 4. You keep those. You give us a good-looking game that has awesome cutscenes and a full-on Great War map, maybe, for the final map. Something like that. Yeah, it's unrealistic to ask for that for, for Black Ops 4, but not for this next game. If they give it more development time, or if they push their asses off onto it. Honestly, I'm okay with getting a subpar DLC 4 if that meant we were getting that for the next game. But we're not. What they're doing is they're rebooting the Ether story, apparently, based on leaks. Which is not what I want. It's not what most people want. I want to see the story end on a high note. And then after that, screw it. I don't care. For the rest of the DLCs in that game, reboot the Ether. I don't really care. Reboot it. I don't really... It doesn't matter to me. Or you can do what I think a lot of people would rather have and continue the chaos story. Or honestly, I'm not even kidding. I'm not even joking when I say this. Merge the stories. You said you wouldn't. I don't care. Merge the stories. It, it's, it's, there, anything can happen in the zombies universe. A split in time or a split in the dimension and boom, the chaos story just, they come to the new universe. Have, what's his name? Uh, Bruno, not Bruno, the, the, the Diego, he shows up in the in the final cutscene of the Ether story, and he's like, bro, guys, I need your help. I don't care, it's a zombie story, let it go crazy. And then uh, characters come over to the Chaos story, and they have all this shit go on, and they have to help the Chaos crew, and then the perks from the main universe go over to Chaos, and then Wonder Weapons, you gotta use a ray gun in Chaos. These could happen, and I would not mind that at all. Or, continue the Ether story, but just end the main story, like end the main story, but continue a story within that same universe. Kind of like what AMCU is doing. They ended the Iron Man arc, they ended the Infinity Saga, but they're still continuing some characters' stories like Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, Captain Marvel, Black Panther, even Thor, the Guardians of the Galaxy, they're all continuing. Have some characters continue, have the Victus crew move on, I don't know. Give us some more Victus maps. Have them do something. Don't have the whole story just end. Like maybe have, the children's universe saved from Dr. Monty, and it's all happy. And maybe all the main characters, Ultimus, Primus, they all are done for. But have Victus still out there, maybe doing something. Maybe have a whole new crew that's still within that universe doing something within one of the universes. Maybe they're tying up loose ends. Maybe there's some loose ends that need to be tied up, but the main crews don't have to do that for whatever reason. They're professional writers. They should be able to come up with this. I don't know. I'm done ranting. That was a fun rant. It turned into a review to a rant. I don't even care. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. See you guys in the next one. Peace out.